Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Unverse Podcast. Danny here today. I'm going to be talking about Batman TMNT 2. This is a six issue miniseries, a sequel to last year's, I believe, of Batman and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, a crossover event from IDW and DC Comics. And if you haven't read the first one, definitely go read it. It's really good. And I, you know, it's, this is going to be, play a big part to it, but the artist, Freddie Williams the second oh my god does he have some really good art the first time I saw it was He-Man uh and Thundercats crossover that came out about uh two years ago or a year ago and then he did the whole Batman team and T thing now he's back for the sequel and if you listen to the podcast you know he is coming back with DC to do Injustice versus he-man and masters of the universe my god dude it's gonna be amazing can't wait um but yeah definitely check out the first batman tmnt crossover because this is a sequel so it's a continuation of the story and wow this is a really good sequel i wasn't really expecting a sequel to happen uh, at all right but this is interesting because it's a character piece it's character development going on with donatello right because it's the turtles they meet batman you know and that that plays a big part in the sequel because they're out you know uh, patrolling the city and they're fighting foot ninjas and donnie you know donatello he gets his ass whooped right and he's he's just been frustrated ever since the last uh comic series right he's frustrated and they're like, come on, Donnie, it's okay, you'll get it next time. He's like, yeah, but you don't understand, you know, talking to Master Splinter, because Splinter's like, you know, you're smart, that's your weapon, you know, you can't do both. And he's like, what are you talking about, Master Splinter? We met Batman. Batman does it all. You know, he's super smart, and he's a master of various martial arts. He can do anything, you know, and he's like, it's really frustrating for, for Donatello, you know, because... He feels useless in the battlefield, and he's frustrated that even that his tech doesn't always work. I think that was a big ploy in this first fight in the in this comic was uh, his tech malfunctioned or something. So he's already frustrated with that. He's frustrated with everything, and then he he sees Batman on a pedestal and says, "He is everything. He is all of us put together and more." You know, so he goes away. He leaves. And he's just in the slump, and I think he thinks the only way to solve it is go see Batman. So he tries to recreate the portal tech that happened in the last comic. And when he does that, he gets sent to Batman's world, yes, but he gets replaced with somebody else on accident. He gets replaced with Bane. So Bane shows up, he is the main antagonist of this series. And now he's in the TMNT world, ready to wreak havoc. And the design choices uh, in here are really great. I mean, they're all with how they look like in the comics right now, like especially with Batman suit. It's current to the DC Comics one. And then Bane, just oh my god, Bane is so massive here. It's crazy. Um, and so yeah, that pretty much start, sets up the story. Uh, it's just Donatello going to fix his mistake. You know, and we see the repercussions of Bane in the TMNT world. I believe it's in New York, yeah. So he's in New York on the in that universe for a week, right? Because that's how long it takes for them to rebuild the portal. So that way Batman and Donatello and uh, Robin, the Damian Wayne Robin, uh, he's in this comic. Uh, they all go back and, wow, wasn't expecting it to be really crazy. Bane being Bane. He recruits pretty much all the Foot Clan ninjas, and yeah, like uh, like like I said earlier, this is a a good story for character development for for Donatello. Like I was really surprised how in depth they went with with it. Um, I mean, there's 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 great action pieces here for sure, and great interactions with characters like Raphael and Damian Wayne were pretty good, and uh, we actually see Casey. And April, um, I don't think they were prominent in the last crossover, 
And uh, eventually at the end, we get Nightwing and, and Batgirl, but they don't really do much. So it was, um, you know, aside from the Donald Hill stuff, there's still good things to see here. Good, small little interactions with characters. Um, I mean, uh, Raphael and uh, Damian Wayne, they fight each other, you know, because like they're, they're both hotheads, you know, and they just wanted to test their skills or whatever. But it... It was it was some good fighting right there going on, just just great stuff, especially at the end when they they both grow as characters. At the end of this disaster that's happening in New York, so that's great stuff to see, and yeah, so Bane's just there in New York City in the TMNT world, and he gets um oh what's his name, uh the Doctor um from the TMNT world that worked with Shredder. Uh, oh gosh, what's this? Uh, Stockman, yeah, Doctor Stockman. Um, and the reason he gets him is because he needs more venom. He's running out, you know. And in this world, they don't have the venom element. Just like in DC, they don't have the mutagen element, right? That was the whole thing uh, with that. So really, just God, oh man, just um, again, the art is so good here. My God, dude, it's, it's amazing. And even just like the, the story structure outside of Donatello being the main character, like I said, again, that's, that's pretty good stuff. Bane is amazing here. He definitely has the menacing presence. And then once all the other characters get the venom juice, oh man, it's just really great. Um, and some interesting stuff too. I mean, honestly, because it's it's very heavy focused on Donatello. You know, that's the crazy part to me is like they decided. You know what? We could just do a generic action six issue series right here, right? And you know, people will buy it because it's Batman with the Ninja Turtles. So and look at the art. So of course they're they would grab it up. But here they decided, nah, let's actually make a real story, like a real sequel to what we did last year. And you know, I'm glad they did it. Uh, because wow, like there was a point where they fought uh, Bane, confronted him, and everybody, and all the foot soldiers have Venom too. But it, this is a new version of Venom because this is stuff they they had a compromise with with the missing element, and it's more potent, so more stronger, more crazy, and there's a whole army of foot soldiers with it. And Bebop and Rocksteady are here, which is cool to see, and they got Venom. So now that everybody's juiced up and we just have these four turtles, Master Splinter, Batman, and Robin, you know, and we we actually see Splinter fight uh, Bane here, which is pretty cool. Uh, but this is where it takes a turn for the worst for the for most of the characters is, man, he gets put down by, I think, a building. Um, and the interesting thing here is Master Splinter got pinned down by some wreckage. And, like, Batman's just kind of, it's weird, Batman's just standing there, and I just, I don't really know why, because in the last issue, you know, he built a good relationship with the Turtles and Master Splinter, but he's just standing there, and even Robin said, Father, we have to help them, you know, we can't just stand idly by, and I think Batman said to the lines, like, yeah, we're just here to get Bane, and then we're gonna head out, kind of thing, you know, I mean, it's great seeing you guys, but we probably should get home as soon as possible or whatever uh, in like the first two issues. And man, Donatello is just so wrecked. He's just like, man, the city's overrun. And it, you know, it gets very comic book because Bane is taken over. Um, what is it called? Satin Island, I think, where the Statue of Liberty is. And that's that's where his base of operations is. And he puts a Bane mask on the Statue of Liberty. I'm like, oh, yeah. This is a comic book, all right. Great stuff. And yeah, so Donatello, he's just destroyed. He's like, wow, they took over New York. They're taking over New York right now, right? They're putting people uh, in like prisons, basically, having them all boxed up around, like surrounded by fences. Like, you know, my father, Master Splinter, is dying. He might not make it. And we're just not strong enough, you know, and he stole some venom. And he's like, well, we should use this. And Raph's like, yeah, totally. I agree. We we should use this to, uh, you know, to 
fight fire with fire, essentially, you know, and they're like, no, there's no way, like, you can't do that, Batman's like, you know, the venom, it changes you, psychologically, it'll break you and all that, you know, and Donnie decides to go solo, and he he gives himself the venom juice, and I was like, oh, man, he just looks crazy, he's massive, he's got the red eyes behind the uh, bandana and stuff, really scary, dude, and yeah, just the final showdown at the end was great because uh, they actually released Shredder from prison, right? Because he got captured last uh, comic arc. And him, Shredder, Batman, and Splinter team up to fight Bane. Crazy stuff, dude. Really crazy stuff. Um, I'd say the main aspect for this definitely is the crossover stuff. Because... You know, I mean, I love the story for what it is, but what really got me too was just seeing the crossover uh, stuff, right? And not just like, oh, they're here and here, but there was like a there's like a fl- little flashback panel, just Batman saying like, yeah, Shredder agreed uh, to go back to prison under one condition. Me and him have a rematch, and we just see the scene of Shredder and Batman fighting. It's like, oh man, that looks that looks badass. You know, like, that's why I got super hyped in Batman Team and Team when it first came out, because one of the covers, I think it was issue three or four, the cover was Ra's al Ghul and Shredder, you know, side by side above Arkham Asylum. And I think at the end of the previous issue, you know, you just saw like, like they just did their alliance and it's like, oh man, that is crazy, dude. Like that is hype. Uh, but overall, this is a really good story. Um, characters get developed and great action pieces good crossover potential like i was saying with the whole raf versus damian wayne uh shredder versus batman uh scene um just characters injecting the venom that was pretty cool and you know it did felt like we we missed a few scenes here and there the that's the problem with the six issue series is it's focusing a lot on donatello's story and about Bane, that uh, there was other stuff going on. Like so, they they went back to the DC world and put Smaster Splinter into a Lazarus pit. But there were a bunch of I think I guess man bats in the cave. So Robin, Raf, Batgirl, Nightwing, and Splinter fought off like a whole army of them basically. And we we only got like one panel of that. So that kind of sucks. And you know, again, we also didn't see. Uh, Splinter go crazy because that's what uh, Damien kept saying is I just remember you know the Lazarus pit it messes with your mind so we should be careful and even Raph says he's like yeah well Master Splinter is one of the greatest martial artists I know it's like okay Nightwing says well we better be prepared to fight him you know so I thought we were gonna see that happen Um, but we don't like it they don't come back until like the final fight so that kind of sucks not a lot of interaction with Casey and April with Batgirl and Nightwing, you know, that could have been interesting. We didn't get nothing from there. And, you know, those are the main downsides, but everything else is pretty good. I'm like, I think it was Batman Team and T, the Turtles went to Gotham, and then now it's Batman coming over. So that's pretty cool. And this is also new, but at the end of the issue, it says, um, Batman says when he leaves, he says, you know, until next time. And it, the, you know, usually comics, they say the end or to be continued. And it, it teases the hint that there might be a Batman TMNT three. So I don't mind having a trilogy. I think that'd be pretty good. And the only downside I think is, um, hopefully they don't try too hard to make it a sequel, right? Like here, they didn't really try that hard. Um, as far as like, you know, sequelitis and all that, you know, here, like I said earlier, they, they're making sure they're writing a good story rather than just, oh, we're doing it again. So that way we can get more cash out of it kind of thing, right? Cause characters and amazing art kind of thing. So uh, that's my only fear for Batman team NC three. If that comes out next year is the potential of it just being a cash grab, right? Um, but yeah, no, uh, Batman Team NT 2 definitely is worth reading. Uh, but again, like I said, highly recommend you read the first one because this is a continuation and, you know, also the first one's just really good too. So 
yeah, definitely had a good time reading it. Six issues, like I said, came out monthly. Uh, the last issue just came out this month at the time of this recording. So the you could also wait for the full volume to come out if you if you don't want to wait to try to grab all six issues at once or whatever. Uh, but yeah, definitely a must grab. And uh, more comic reviews are coming soon. I was I'm trying to catch up to my comics, so I'm glad I was able to finish this when it came out in the same month. You know, so that's that, and that is pretty much it, guys. I mean, just amazing. It's just you know, mainly mainly Freddie Williams the second man. He is such an amazing artist, and it really captures the the essence of Batman and the Ninja Turtles here. And I have to say, like, the covers are really good. And I got one of the covers was actually a variant. And the variant is, like, the old school TMNT art. And there were a few others like that, too. And we get to see, you know, Batman and Bane and all them in the old school TMNT style. So I thought, like, hey, yeah, that's pretty good, too, guys. I'm glad that's happening. So, again, yeah, check it out, guys, for sure. Thanks for listening, as always. Uh, you can email us at unversepodcast at gmail.com. You have any questions, comments, concerns? Are there any comics that you want us to talk about? You know, maybe we'll check it out if I already have them or something I've been meaning to read. You know, give us an email. And, of course, you can follow us on social media at Unverse Podcast anywhere you go. And remember, guys, right now, limited time offer. If you hop on over to Marvel Talk Podcast, our other podcast, and there's a special thing going on over there, Wolverine, The Long Night, Brought to you by Stitcher Premium. This is the first time Marvel has officially come out with a story uh, podcast, basically. It's 10 episodes, limited series, and it's Wolverine in a detective-esque story in Alaska. Sounds pretty cool. Definitely checking it out. However, it's Stitcher Premium. It's blocked by the paywall, subscription-based fee. You know, but of course, you also get a bunch of other stuff from Stitcher Premium. They have a lot of content there. And right now, if you hop on over, like I said, to Marvel Talk, check out the latest episodes over there. Click on the description. There's going to be a link there, stitcher.com slash premium. You click on that, enter promo code TALK, and you get a one-month free trial to Stitcher Premium so you could check out Wolverine the Long Night and anything else they have to offer. So again, thank you, Stitcher, for the opportunity to help support the podcast and yeah definitely check it out guys um because marvel talk we are going to be doing an episode on wolverine the long night once it ends and it's actually coming to an end soon guys Uh, i believe it's on episode six or seven so we're nearing the end for that and yeah i can't wait to talk about that podcast so while we wait for that episode and more reviews thanks for listening and as always we will talk to you next time.